on the title screen, it is actually spec'd out at 0.05 microns, and it's supposed to take through 200 or 400? 200 gallons per minute in a 24 by 12 um, surface area. That's pretty, pretty awesome. So again, 24 by 12 uh, hydro screen using a Coanda effect. We just got it. Uh, it's not hooked up, so you don't see it running. We'll do that later. All right, I wanted to show you the, what a pelt wheel will look like after a year and a half of hard running. This is pretty silty water coming into this Harris turbine. You see the holes and the... But it still actually works pretty good. But it's lost, eh, it's probably lost a 20% of its power caper capability, but it still works. And uh, anyway, um, he's also found some cool coatings. Um, the only problem with coating this stuff, it's like a ceramic coating. The problem is the, the wheel will get out of balance and you have to take it to a machine shop. You see the machine shop will come in here and um, just drill out and uh, balance, balance this pelt wheel out. So a lot of variables when you do hydro. Solar is pretty simple when you start really getting into a hydro system. We're going to take this Harris off. It's maintenance day for this system and uh, we're working on a lot of things. So we're going to, this is the Harris, just unbolted and unhooked all the, all the hoses. These hoses are awesome. These are 350 psi textile air. I don't know who makes them, but we're, uh, anyway. WP textile for future references. Okay. Here is the bottom. You can see it kind of looks like wet paint. It looks like it's freshly coated. Um, but without rebalancing the pelton, you get into trouble. And the system really, with four nozzles, it gets really crazy. So it's out of balance. And here are the nozzles. But the coating, I guess, is working really well. You just have to rebalance your pelton if you do coat it up. We're removing the pelton wheel. You gotta, it's got like a chuck on the other end. you got to hold it with a chuck key. And then unscrew the turret, unscrew the pelt wheel. That's not bad at all. All right, we're just swapping uh, pelt wheels right now because we got to take this to the machine shop. And he's going to take and get this thing balanced out. And we're going to put the old one back on. That looks bad, but she still runs fine. And she is sharp because she's been sharpened by all that sand coming down the mountain. We've got to hold that chuck key. Pretty simple setup. Harris turret. And this puts out, over here you got three phase AC coming off of this alternator and this can be custom designed I guess, but I think this rectifier takes it to 60 volts and DC, so they're making DC right here and sending it up the mountain. He's got an inline ammeter so you can do a little troubleshooting. This is awesome stuff. When your hydro system is down you can use a small generator and this one's an Onan old RV generator works great and it's in a homemade Faraday cage made out of screening and so when your hydro system's down make sure you get a generator around another cool thing about having a hydro system you can uh, fight fire this thing makes incredible pressure and there's you can pump water all over the neighborhood there's some drain lines here to hook up hoses Anyway, lots of water available. Right now it's just down, and then you're going to say, well, why isn't she running? Because we're putting in the new hydro screen. The other good troubleshooting tool that you really need besides your ammeter is something to check on the water condition and a good gauge that will allow you to tell that your system is, um, has been purged of air. If that needle's bouncing around, that means um, you've got air in the system. There's several standpipes throughout the system to get the air out, but this will help you a lot. And so if something's not working, you check that first, check your ammeter, just some simple troubleshooting tools. The other cool thing about having a hydro system is uh, you can actually plumb multiple sources. Like this site has another great source and you're looking at it that isn't part of the hydro so in the summer this actually can flow as good as the other one as well as the other one so he's going to plumb one nozzle from this source and run three nozzles off the main source and uh, that'll probably produce the I would say you're going to get at least 100 to 200 watts what do you think off of that?